Good evening. Thank you for being here this evening. My name is Jackie Wheatley, and uh, I am a CPA, the CPA owner of Rainbow Tax and Accounting. We have a small office in Milwaukee where we provide traditional CPA services in a non-traditional environment. Uh, we started working with the cannabis industry in 2015, and Part and parcel to that, we had a rebranding effort, and one of the things the rebranding effort ha came up with was the concept of that I was a small business therapist. I didn't know that at the time. So I want to talk to you a little bit about what that looks like to be a small business therapist. I'm not your typical CPA who's going to talk to you about numbers and 280E and taxes and how to avoid that, although I know all those things. I don't find that that's the best place to provide services to my clients. So what is a small business therapist? Um, the small business therapist helps businesses and their owners to find clarity about what is and is not working in their business, much like a psychoanalyst would help someone who is having challenges in their everyday life. Owning a small business is a very lonely job. It's difficult to find peers, and then you have to develop a trusting relationship with them, and often there's an air of competition, although, as we've heard tonight, in the cannabis industry, that competition is not quite as cutthroat as maybe some of the other industries that I've been involved with in the past, um, although I'm seeing it become a little more cutthroat, which is kind of distressing. Anyway, um, the small business therapist can help you to understand the many aspects of your business from anything from financial reports to figuring out what the required filing deadlines are because there are a lot of them. Someone earlier tonight talked about being, uh, being a real business and guess what y'all, you're real business owners and you have to be a real business. Um, they also help you develop marketing strategies and also to figure out when is the right time and the right place and the right price to sell your business if you want to do that. So small business therapists will provide you with neutral feedback. Not what you want to hear all of this, but it's feedback that's necessary for success. So. Anyway. Small business therapy empowers the owners to develop issues such as setting limits with employees, defining ideal customers, and locating professionals who share your common values. If I've learned one thing about um, not only this industry, the cannabis industry, my other specialty is the LGBT community, they both, one of the things they share in common is sharing common values is critically important. So small business therapy begins with answering a few simple questions. Number one is, what keeps you up at night? Number two is, what is the most frustrating challenge of your day? And number three is, who or what creates the most stress in your business? I can tell you in my business, it's me. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, my office manager and life partner is in the audience, and she will tell you that that is the truth, okay? Um, so, but, but for example, if it's, to give you an example of what a business therapy session might deal with, if, if what's keeping you up at night is the finances of your business, a session might include some things like looking at your financial reports and determining what are the low-hanging fruits or what we call in the industry the simple fixes. A lot of times I will find with businesses that costs have continued to creep up sm slowly, but their prices have not done corresponding increases. So the amount of profit they're making has gone down and they haven't even realized it. So oftentimes when a business owner looks to cut costs, it costs that's not the best thing to do. Maybe it's they just need to raise their prices. Um, some other times we've discovered, we can discover that there's one particular area of a business that's bleeding the business dry. It's something that's just really not working. Um, a lot of business owners will try and throw more money at it thinking that that's going to fix it, and it doesn't. So the business therapist's job is to tell the business owner, you know what, that's not going to work. And sometimes they don't want to hear that. So, you know, but in that, I want to caution you is that when we're looking at 
yeah, we've got an area of the business that's bleeding us dry, but is that area of the business feeding something else that is not bleeding us dry? So we have to look at the business holistically, and we do that. Uh, it's not just the one area that's the problem. We have to see how does it fit into the whole and what will happen. So the other thing that, the other area where I find sometimes being, a, I said, sometimes being a small business owner is a lonely business. So here's the typical one that I run into a lot is that in order to solve that problem, the business owner decides they want to get a partner. And I'll tell you, here is where if you're going to go into partnership with anybody, you need a small business therapist. You do, the person you're going into partnership does, and probably you need to be in therapy all around if you're going to go into a, get a business partner. So, um, because it is a bigger commitment than being married. <laughs> so the first thing I would tell somebody when they come into me and they say, well, I'm looking at ad and so-and-so as a partner, I say, you have to date before you get married. That's the first step. Um, and the reason to do that is to make sure that you and the potential business partner are compatible. You want to make sure that your business partner has the same work ethic and passion for the business as you do. And I can tell you from personal experience, when that is not the case, it is a dismal, spirit, is a dismal failure. And that happened to me personally in 2002. So I know what I'm saying here. Um, the other thing that's critically important when you have a business partnership is understanding the financial responsibilities of each partner, both to the business and to each other. I can't tell you the number of times that I've gotten the joy of mediating a business divorce, which are very nasty and very ugly, and usually the irreconcilable differences were that they didn't ever have a clear understanding of who was responsible for what. So, um, when you're going through a business divorce, the two things that happen is you're, all, you're putting your business and your professional reputation on the line, but you're also potentially taking away from your family's needs because it can impact your ability to even make a living. So, then the next one was who or what creates stress in your life? And what I want to say is no, it is not the OLCC. You think it is, but it's not. Um, this topic tends to be fairly elusive because the stressors change from day to day, from hour to hour. When we're in a, some kind of a therapy session, one of the things we'll do is we'll have them keep a time log, figure out where is the stress coming from. I'm a CPA. I just got through the most stressful period of time in my life. It ended April 18th. And... The stressor, the day-to-day, hour-to-hour stressor is that every client that I have who I was doing individual tax returns believe that they were my only client. <laughs> they didn't know about the other 399 tax returns we had to get done also. So, um, but if you keep track of those stressors, sometimes you can figure out, well, okay, this is a really great client. Why are they being so stressful right now? Well, what I come to find out she and her partner were getting a divorce. Well, of course she's going to be stressed out. So sometimes if you keep track of what's going on, um, and even if it's just mentally, it's better if you write it down, but sometimes you can only do it mentally, and make sure that you understand what's going on other than the business in your client or in your customer. Um, I like a lot of what I've heard tonight about that. I think it's very, very helpful. So, and one of the last things I want to talk about is that um, finding a small business client, uh, therapist for yourself. So if you were one of my other clients that was not in the cannabis industry, I would send you to the Small Business Administration, SCORE, or one of the 16 small business development centers in the state of Oregon. But guess what? You're in the cannabis industry dealing with a Schedule One product, so none of those places will help you. If you tell them you're in the cannabis industry, they will not provide services to you. So that gets, sends me to what we traditionally in the industry call the uh, three Fs. And we send startups to the three Fs when they need money for funding, which are the friends, families, and fools. So 
If you have friends who are small business owners, I recommend you talk to them. Find out who they talk to. There are lots of business development programs out there, and I would like to see one specifically devoted to this industry, though I haven't seen it yet. I think the closest thing is these monthly meetings we have with the OCA. Um, the next thing is to look at what area do you need expertise in. If you're the financial wizard and you keep track of all the numbers and the accounting in your business, you probably don't need me as your small business therapist. If you fail miserably at marketing, you need a marketing guru. Okay, so get the small business therapist that fits the needs of your business. Okay, um, and then finally, you want to find someone who's going to speak honestly to you. And if you were my particular client as a small business, you better be comfortable with swearing because I'm going to swear. Because that's how honest I'm going to get about some things, okay? Um, but you want them to help you to clearly see your business the way that it is, help, help you define your goals, and help you move your business down along that path. And just like any type of therapy, working with a small business therapist will not be easy. But I guarantee you, in the long run, it will be worth it. Thank you.